Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's the time that you've all been waiting for. I came in from a different side in this video because I figured for something a little, for, for the end of the series, I had to go and change it up a little bit. There will be one more video in this series, but it's nothing you guys haven't seen already. It's a more specific look at Dark Labyrinth and the things they offer. I'll be filming that soon. Right now, I'm just going to give you what you've all been waiting for. If you've seen the Final Fear review, you know Dark Labyrinth, what that was like. I'm just going to reshoot that and go a little bit more in depth in it. But right now is the culmination of everything I've experienced over the past month. My rankings of the three houses, three houses, haunted houses in Buffalo. We'll start from the bottom and work our way up. I'll discuss a little bit on each one, not too much. If you guys want to see more about them, you can watch their each respective reviews. I'll just give you a little bullet points. So here we go. Let's start. Number three. The House of Horrors and Haunted Catacombs. On, where, where is that? Union and Walden in Cheektowaga. House of Horrors and Haunted Catacombs claims to be, of course, like many others do, America's biggest and most terrifying haunted attraction. Well, I'm not so sure about that. I wouldn't even really go so far as to include them on this list. But because I need the content to put in there, I have to. Their costumes look really cool. But... Seeing as in the past three years they have hardly changed a single thing, and their houses are, their two houses were very boring. Three houses, those being dragged into the grave, the zombie apocalypse paintball, and walking undead escape from Woodbury. Those, uh, not Woodbury, Prison Break. Those three were very boring, to the point of it being boring to tears. Escape from Woodbury, the other big experience of it, was basically Body Harvesters 2.0. It was a reskin. And the other two good houses, Hell House and Killer's Theater, were virtually identical to the experiences I had in them two or three years ago. If I'm coming back two years later, I want something different. At least a change up of layout. Even if you don't do a completely new house, I want something different. Even if it's simple. But there was nothing changed. There was seemingly no effort put into what House of Horrors and Haunted Catacombs did this year. And it showed. Number three on the list, the worst. Which kind of surprises me because I consider it would be a step above Fright World. Uh-uh. Number two is Fright World. Transit Road and Depew. They move around a little bit, but that's where they are this year. Fright World, America's Scream Park, the largest and most terrifying haunted attraction in America. Right, right, right. Six houses for your pleasure. Grindhouse, Condemned, Erie State Asylum, Insanity, and I'm missing one, I'm missing phobias. Now to me, Fright World just doesn't have what it takes anymore. It's detailed, but just doesn't have the right punch. But after what I experienced at the catacombs, Fright World is better. Now two years ago when I went, the catacombs totally kicked Fright World's ass. But in that time, Fright World has swapped things up, changed them up a little bit, and made it different. Fright World just sort of stayed stagnant, rested on its laurels. Fright World introduced a new house and two res complete reskins, and redesigned the houses as layouts that existed prior. So even if it was a familiar experience in some ways, it was also a little bit different. Fright World has fantastic makeup in its actors, it's not just a costume. And they have a believable layout. Catacombs is very linear. The detail is okay. Fright World has a believable layout in their houses with implicit and fantastic detail. Very good. Very immersive experience. Not scary for me, but better than Catacombs. 
And the number one, of course, if you had any question, number one best house I experienced in 2014 was Final Fear in McKinley in Hamburg. In the McKinley Mall in the old Dicks, right behind Sears. Not in the McKinley Mall, but behind it. Final Fear with District of the Dead in the Dark Labyrinth. All offered to me something completely different. There was a clear passion going on inside of Final Fear. The actors, the designs, the sets, the layouts, the way you interact with the house, how you crawl, how you gotta run, how you gotta move things and open doors, interact, tactile. The unique designs like quarantine, like chaos, like the unique take on the slaughterhouse, like Restless, Doll Evil, Mineshaft, and Bust a Buffoon inside of Dark Labyrinth. Even though Dark Labyrinth is a separate group from those, it's still, it was still within the Final Fear blanket and provided a fantastic experience, which will be talked about in the future, or you could go and look at the Final Fear review to see. And of course, with those things that I experienced there last week, I was impressed with the extreme attention to detail and the passion that was there after the 13 years I was told things had been going on there. There was clearly a love, a passion. The actors were all wonderful. The sets, the houses, were unique, different, and non-linear. I mean, they were linear, but it didn't feel like you didn't feel like you were shuffling down a hallway, making a turn, going down another hallway to a room. They were interesting and unique designs. The props, the technology used, it was all top-notch, interesting, innovative, unique, and passionate. And as if the passion and detail and wonderfully creative scares that came from anywhere inside of these houses weren't enough for you, stripped identity and the insanity and depravity within reason therein just was the icing on the cake. So without a doubt, Final Fear and District of the Dead with Dark Labyrinth were the best, was the best house of 2014. And I consider it will continue to be as much for years to come. Because Fright World and Catacombs really don't change up their games very much. But Final Fear does. That's my verdict. Final Fear in Hamburg, in Orchard Park, wherever it's kind of on the border. They get the best review. They're the best. And of the houses that I did, what were the best? Well, they were all at Final Fear. It's really hard to rank everything I experienced there. Now, the two best, I would say... Oh, I... I it's hard. But... I really did enjoy Quarantine at Final Fear, because of how big and expansive and unique it was. But I also loved Restless. I enjoyed the Mind Shaft, I enjoyed Doll Evil, Chaos, that was unique. I enjoyed all of it, the Slaughterhouse. So I really can't narrow it down. But the houses that really truly stood out to me, and in no order, I'm not naming one above the other, but they were both standouts because they were unique. The first was Dark Labyrinth, the additional company inside. Their unique, immersive 3D custom experience of Bust a Buffoon. I had the opportunity to experience it again tonight. Jasper and his dad gave me a free go just because they recognized me and wanted me to experience it again if I wanted to. Much appreciated. Unique and fantastically immersive experience that, well, check out the Final Fear review for that. Or just wait for the revised version. New and different and fantastic. The other amazing standout house was the one that got its own video. Stripped Identity. There's too much to explain right here and now about Stripped Identity. But it was the age-restricted 18 and older house that subjected you to all manner of torture and humiliation and bizarre insanity. Everything therein set Final Fear many steps above all the other haunts in western New York, sets the bar of what to beat. So this is a challenge to any other house that's watching, anyone from Fright World or Catacombs or any other upstart house. Final Fear is your target to beat.
because Final Fear right now is kicking everyone's ass. It is clearly the best in Buffalo, New York. From the technology to the actors to the design to the originality and passion, there is no equal to Final Fear and everything inside of it. Go there. Check it out. You don't even need to waste your time with Fright World and Catacombs. Final Fear is worth every penny you'll pay. Especially Bust a Buffoon and Stripped Identity. That's all I have to say about that. Thank you to everyone who helped me. Nate going with me to uh, Fright World. Zach with me to Final Fear. And the crew from Martial Arts coming with me to Catacombs. Thank you to all the actors who made the experience worthwhile, especially in Final Fear and everyone who worked with me there. Special thank you to the fellas in Dark Labyrinth, Jasper and his father. Thank you. Thank you everyone who helped put this together and make it the great experience that it was. You guys earned it. My name is Kenshin, and I'm peacing the fuck out. We'll see you guys later.